see the law of this jungle It's as old and as real as the sky And a wolf that abides will prosper But a wolf that breaks it will die You see out here in this jungle We run it forward and back For the strength of the pack is the wolf And the strength of the wolf is the pack I used to run with the pack Nowadays I run for the pack Represent from the front to the back Wolves in my heart, my city and the map I was in the field, you're sitting on the bench See me in the gym, rep till I'm dead Yeah, yeah, yeah Sweat till I witness, I think we're dead Yeah, we stay ready for the war, man, I settle in the school Settle it Right now I'm with the hype, I ain't in it for the life. I was down in the ground, now I'm up for the fire. I'm on it. See sight at the dark, now it's into the light. Alpha mode, down for my team. I wake up and I'm chasing a dream. Don't dirt but my crib stay clean. Step for me, view boy, how you mean? What's that? Look at my tongue with the verses. Right. He's cheating him, man, I'm on the verse with. Right. Prize fighter, I'm taking the verses. Right. Death match like your family didn't hurt this. The law of this jungle, we're running forward and back. For the strength of the pack is the wolf, and the strength of the wolf is the pack. You see out here with this jungle, we're running forward and back. For the strength of the pack is the wolf, and the strength of the wolf is the pack. A very good afternoon and welcome to the home of football. We are back. The sun is shining. It's summer, baby. What are we doing here? What's going on? We should be in a beer garden somewhere, even better, on holiday like Tomo was. You know, look at that beautiful tan. Look at the man. Gorgeous fellow. And he's back. Andy Thompson alongside me, the Hall of Famer. And Lee Naylor with us as well. Good afternoon to you, gentlemen. I'll take them off. I'll stop being silly. We're in business mode. This is what we're here to do, Tom. It's always the first time you don't be silly. Um, what a what an occasion we're in store for here at Molyneux in absolute scorching heat, it has to be said. Um, that will have an impact. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. We'll of course talk about the new man who has arrived this week and the man who left as well in just a second. But before we get into any of it, Tomo, good to be back and hopefully, fingers crossed, an exciting season ahead. Well, hopefully so. Um, so we've come back with the nice weather as well, so uh, it's always a plus. But um, yeah, it's after the defeat last week, so like, uh, we've got to come here today, which is going to be a tough game against Fulham, um, and put on a response to what happened last week. So look... Um, they want to get a result. They've got to start to put the ball in the net. What's more important? They create the opportunities, but there's, an, there's a chance today that they can put that right. And Lee Naylor, we have a back four. And given the events of this week, it appears we are sticking with the back four. So are you excited by that change? Um, you know, it's, it's a change that they've been working on, that they've been saying they want to do for a long time now. Um, so... You know, it's, if the gaffer wants to play that way, then we need to adjust fairly quickly. It gives them the opportunity to have more attackers on the field, doesn't it? And that's been something that fans have discussed for an awful long time. How do we get more goals out of this team? If we don't have a player individually that's going to regularly get into double figures, we need as many on the field who can chip in to try and get us to those magic numbers that will get us at the table, right? Absolutely. I think... Um... That's, that's been a problem for a while now, is goals. Um, so, yeah, the understanding of the back four coming in and potentially having more players to be in the box when the, when the ball's delivered um, or getting into the final, more players into the final third, then hopefully we can create more chances. Um, Tomo, it did come with it, though, the departure this week on loan uh, to Everton. We don't know whether it will eventually become permanent or not, but given his own message on social media, it appears that Connor Cody certainly feels like this is the end of his Wolves career. And first and foremost, what an unbelievable servant he's been to this football club. Yeah, so as I said, look, he's been captain for the last four years as well, and we know what he's done as captain for the club, the way that he speaks out for the players uh, and the community as well, what he's got involved in. So it's been great, um, and the, the character that he is. But, but look, Football is one of those things that is, if you're not playing, you want to be playing. Uh, and he had an opportunity to go to Everton and play there. And look, it's, there's no doubt about it. This manager wants to play with four at the back. And he just thinks that Connor probably struggles with that back four for one reason or another. Um, and he's given the opportunity. But look, it, it's nice that the club haven't held him back. That They've just said it. Because he's got ambitions of playing in the World Cup. And he knows for a fact if he's not on, on the pitch, 
and his soap, his, his chances of going uh, are going to be reduced. So that that was a big thing for him. That he, He's got to give himself an opportunity because this will be possibly his, his last opportunity to get into the World Cup squad and be involved in that. So, look, it, it's right for him. The club feel like it's right for them. Uh, and you just wish him luck, sir, because he's been great for the club. Um, Tomo appears to have frozen. Uh, don't worry, uh, he is still moving, uh, just not on screen right now. We'll try and sort that in a second. In fact, uh, let's go and, and take a look back at the highlights from last weekend against Leeds, and then hopefully we'll have a much more mobile and moving Tomo. Neves with a lovely first time sweeping diagonal ball to try and get Pedro Neto away. Neto getting the better of Christensen, driving into the penalty area, clipping across towards Hicharanga, heads it down, Daniel Pudence arriving! Oh, what a start! Brilliant finish from Daniel Pudence and Wolves lead at Allen Road. It's a superb team goal to start off the new season. Back to Neves, trying to lift it for the running behind. Yi Chan Wang lifts it on, left footed strike, oh what a good hit, good save though by Melier. Harrison looking for Rodrigo, Ainuri, oh we can't turn there inside your own penalty area. Harrison wins it back and Ainuri gets a foot in, still not clear, Rodrigo to strike it low and Leeds equalise. It's a goal of Wolves own making, Ainuri should have cleared the ball, he turned. And then he and Neves couldn't deny Leeds. Out to left-hand side to Pedro Neto. He's got bodies arriving in the penalty area. Neto pulling it back. He Chan Wang. He's Dendonka. Oh, what a save by Melier. Gives White's corner. Right-footed from the right-hand side. Nice delivery in. Headed goal was and just tipped over. Greenwood in field to Adams. Through the gap to Click. Now Bamford, left-hand side of the box, low one in, oh no! Aronson turns it home! A lead from 1-0 down, a 2-1 up. Wolves the better team in this second half. Neto tried to block him off, Neves can't win it back. Lorente, Greenwood, Harrison down the left, Harrison running at Collins, clipping across him, Bamford, what a save by Jose Sarr! Unbelievable left-handed. Corner, left-footed from Neto. Hides the far post, Kilman's header just onto the roof of the net. The 22-23 season is underway and we are back at Molyneux for our first home game of the campaign. It's been a long 13 weeks away, but we are back and now ready to face newly promoted side Fulham here this afternoon. We are unbeaten against Fulham since 2018, only losing one of our last 11 meetings with the West London side. In fact, of our last three matches, they've all ended in the exact same scoreline, 1-0 wins. Another 1-0 win would be welcomed here today as we're still looking for our first points of the 22-23 campaign after leaving Elland Road last time out empty-handed. Fulham, on the other hand, got their season off to a great start with a two-all draw against Liverpool and they're going to be looking to continue that momentum here today. So Wolves are going to have a challenge ahead of them to stop them from doing that. We've also got a few firsts here this afternoon. Marco Silva will be facing Bruno Large for the very first time and our latest signing, Gonzalo Guedes, is going to be on the bench this afternoon and if he comes comes on he'll be making his Wolves debut here at Molyneux. Also today we have our assistant referee Natalie Aspinall who is only the third official to officiate a Premier League game who is female which is absolutely incredible and we are really excited to give her a big Molyneux welcome here this afternoon. Bruno also confirmed in his press conference yesterday that Ruben Neves will be wearing the captain's armband for the foreseeable but he also praised Maximilian Kilman who he said had lots of attributes that would make him a fantastic captain. It's going to be a scorcher here at Molyneux today, about 34 degrees I think we're expecting. So make sure you stay safe in the sun, lots of sun cream, stay hydrated, but enjoy today's match and hopefully come full time we will be celebrating our first three points of the campaign. Uh, Gemma Frith with her preview there. So this is the starting lineup that Bruno has selected unchanged from the side that started the season at Ellen Road a week ago, but there are some notable additions on the substitutes bench. Gonzalo Guedes, we'll talk about him in just a second. Nelson Semedo 
and Adama Traore all coming in to be amongst the substitutes. Luke Cundall, Chem Campbell, Totti is in amongst the subs as well. Connor Ronan, Willie Bolly, and Matea Sharkic are the substitutes. So, uh, Sar in goal, Johnny Collins, Kilman, and Aitnuri, the back four, Dendonka and Neves in midfield, Gibbs White, Pedenza, Neto, all supporting He Chan Huang up top. We were just having the conversation about Connor Cody. So let's start there, Lee Naylor, in terms of Ruben Neves being the captain. And uh, as Gemma mentioned, uh, Bruno talking at Maximilian Kilman this week, because one of the things that was put to me about uh, Connor Cody moving on is that nothing against Cody. Cody was an immense captain at this football club. But when you have such a clear leader, there isn't always an opportunity for those underneath them to step up and develop themselves in that role, whether it be leading on the field or off the field. And so now there is a clear opportunity for the likes of Neves, for the likes of Kilman, and maybe one or two others, Nails, to step forward and take that opportunity themselves. I mean, for me, you know, you should... The 11 players going out there should be 11 captains anyways. Uh, that's how I've always looked at it. Um, yeah. There's not Col an excuse, though, is there? There's no, not an excuse now. No, that, no. Obviously, Cody was a leader. Um, the way, obviously, he's been talking up Kilman, he wants to bring something out of him that maybe, you know, he's a, maybe he's a bit quiet. Uh, maybe he wants him to be a bit more loud uh, on the pitch. Um, that's that's what I, that's what I get from that, anyways. So, you know, I think, you know, if 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 he does get that, if if he if he gets louder on the on the field. Because you know I haven't really heard him much when I've been to watch. Um, he seems he seems a quiet lad. Um, but you know if if he brings that side out of him, then he could be a leader. That's the thing, isn't it, Tomo? That we're going to see something different from some of the players, like Kilman, like Collins, maybe. You know, we need some more senior figures within that team to step up and fill the void that Connor Cody's departure will make. Yeah, as Niles was touching on there, so you've got to have 11 on the pitch. So you've got to have people who are going to be uh, speaking out, giving players a telling off if they're not doing their job on the pitch as well. And it's, it's not just coming from one person. So look, it needs like, a collective number of players on there just to make sure that we're giving out information, but also as well, if not somebody aren't doing the job to get them into position and making sure that they don't get uh, slack with the way that they're playing. And, mm. and that's what it's all about. So look, it's making sure that you get something that gives you that winning mentality and say, OK, Neves is the captain uh, with the band on, but everybody else out there should be encouraging or telling or giving information to other players out there anyway. So look, if they're not doing their job or if they're not doing what they should be doing. I'm talking about the change of formation. Uh, we can see from the goal last week that there is a di slightly different element to the way Wolves play now. And, and as we watch it in just a second, the way that Ruben Neves picks up on the ball, the way Pedro Neto bursts forwards, and then the finish from Daniel Fidenz, there is an excitement there about the way Wolves can play. If we can see a little bit more of this. Yeah, of, co of course it is. But also as well, you've lost that safety blanket as well, haven't you, from that extra player that you've got at the back as well. So, as I said off air earlier, so look, we've got to have players out there who know that pack four has got to defend. There's, there's got no opportunity to think, oh, I can stay out the field, like we did when we had three at the back, especially the wing backs. You've got to be back. You've got to be back for defending. And you saw there from the, the second goal from Leeds, the back line of Wolves, it's got to drop. It's got to drop back there. Because that ball, as soon as that ball comes across, one of the centre halves, one of the fullbacks, whoever's in that position, should be just clearing the ball away. Because they're still up the field a little or too far by five or ten yards, it's allowed them to have that space just between the keeper uh, and the back line. And was able to pass that ball across for him to, to score the goal. And, and that's going to be the difference uh, for the team, is that they haven't got that safety player there anymore. They've got to make sure, one, they can defend as a back four, but also as well, they're in the correct position as a back line as well. And again, making it difficult for teams just to play that ball, which that second goal come from. Well, it is a evolution in the way Wolves are operating under Bruno Large. Let's hear from the boss. He's been talking about the strength of the Premier League. All the teams are, are strong. We can see by the results, we can see what, what happened week by week. 
and we can see about that game and what Fulham did uh, last season, how strong they are. So, look, uh, they have top players like uh, like Dmitrikovic. How you can score a player? You can how many goals he score? Forty, right? In Championship. So he start the for his first game against Liverpool. Sometimes there's no teams who can score two goals against Liverpool and just one player scored two goals against Liverpool. So you can see the kind of, just not the striker, but the dy dynamic of the team. And of course, we're talking about also uh, the staff they have, the manager they have. I I know uh, a little bit of Marco's work, what, what he did in Portugal, what he did here in England in the Premier League and Championship. So. It's going to be one more time every week. It's a, a tough opponent, tough manager, tough player. So, but the most important thing is also to, to, to look for what we did uh, in our game. So, like I said, and after watching the game and to talk with the players, we, we come f from the game, our game against Leeds, with that, that feeling that we play the way we want to play. We, 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 in four weeks, we already start to do good things with the different systems, try to recover more balls, try to be more pressure, try to create more opportunities, go there and play away games with that confidence that we play and after 15 minutes we we, we score the goal. The only thing that we need to improve is it's, it's, it's the way we suffer and we concede that, that two goals. So, but that's why, look, uh, what, what the manager wants. The manager wants time to work, uh, me in this case, I want patient to at least until the end of the transfer window for to, to convince the right players to, to, to come and help us and, and also and, and after time because we can do we want to do more things like we did uh, in the Leeds games. In the, in the he wants time and he wants patience. You can see Lee Naylor chuckling because Nails managers can ask for that. They very often do not get it. Yeah, I mean, that's what every manager wants now. But it, you can understand why he's asking for it, because of the changes that are going through. But do, we're going to need to see something of it, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, when you're changing a formation, especially defensive line, you do need time for players to adjust, for new players to come in to adjust, uh, to get used to the other players that are already here. Um, yeah, it's, it, it, there's a transition going on, and you know, hopefully the fans are patient and give the team, a, uh, you know, a chance to bed in. Tomo, uh, time and patience, glorious, glorious things. Oh. But we haven't won in eight games now, either side of the season finishing and now this season starting. And it's very early days, right? But at some point, we're going to need we we need something to lift everybody. Yeah, of course. So, look, um, you look at um, the games coming from February uh, this year, where we didn't win many games. I think it was four games from February we won, um, and we would have been was it 19th in the league on on the form of that as well. Uh, and again, losing that game last week wasn't great, even though we, we created opportunities. But you know as well as me, so look, you judged on results, you judged on performances, uh, in the way that you get uh, results out of it. And at the moment. So, look, he, he will get a little bit of leeway because, say, again, the, the nucleus of the team is probably still Nuno's. But, again, in this league, you ain't going to get time because you can't afford to because of the amount of games that you play uh, and the fixtures that you play. And you're playing against quality sides every week. You've got to get it right near enough straight away. And, I'm looking, I know that he's changed to uh, a back four, and that's his choice uh, as, a, as a manager. But if it's his choice then he's going to die by the sword if he doesn't get results. And, that, and that's the main thing, that he's got to try and get the results sooner rather than later because no patience, no time will be given if you don't get results. Um, they obviously did talk about signings and stuff, and it's clear that he still wants more new players, but a pretty big one arrived in the shape of Gonzalo Guedes this week. Now, technically, technically, and I'm saying this for Tomo's benefit, technically... It is pronounced Gedge, Gonzalo Gedge. But nobody is going to call him Gedge. So the decision has been made that we will go with the English version. He's a handsome devil. Look Harry, at him right Harry. there. Gonzalo <laughs> Guedes. Guedes um, will be fine, mate. Just put it that way. Uh, 
<laughs> what do we think he's going to add? Because we, it was clear against Leeds that we needed another option in the forward areas. We well, now have a Damatre already off the bench as well, by yeah, the way. But having that player who can operate a, a, in a different type of roles, what's he going to provide, do we think? Well, I'm hoping that he's going to provide goals. So, look, if, if we've got to bring in players that have scored. I've said this the last couple of se- two or three seasons. In this league, you've got, to, you've got to take your opportunities. Again, we had, was it 15, 16 chances or opportunities last week? Uh, and we still only scored that one opportunity from Pedence. We've got to take them. You can't afford to keep missing chance after chance in this league because it's unforgiving. It's not going to give you opportunities to keep having a lot of chances in front of goal. And sooner or later, we've got to get somebody in there that can score goals. And look, say, you said that the results probably didn't wasn't fair or a reflection on the way that Wolves played last week, but it doesn't matter. He still lost the game. It doesn't matter. We had them three games last year where we played really well in those first three games, didn't win a game. But again, people will say, OK, you're playing well, but results aren't great. They'll come. And they did, eventually. Mm. But you've got to get results in this league. You can't afford it, because sooner or later, you'll start to drop down and you, you, you're playing catch-up. The, uh, thing is, the thing is, though, and like let's bring Nails in on this. Like We talk about needing goals, Nails. He scored 36 in 178 for Valencia, 58 in his career in 297 appearances. He, you know, he's not prolific. He's not an out-and-out Raul Jimenez replacement or alternative, is he? He's a player that's going to nip in, maybe in the Daniel Pedence role, maybe in the Gibbs White or Neto role. He's an addition to that part of it. We still haven't got that out-and-out prolific striker like Fulham. Man. No, I, I've always known him to be a winger, stroke, inside forward. So, for me, I think he's a classy operator. I think he brings a lot. Um, I think he'll fit in well here. Um, he's got class, he's got a good ability, uh, very technical player. Um, so for me, I, I, I think it's a really good addition. Just seen his entourage downstairs, by the way, and the guy travels well. Um, let's, uh, let's hear a little bit from him. <laughs> he's, uh, he's what been do you mean speaking. by that, Mikey? <laughs> I'm just going to leave it there. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's hear from him. He's been chatting to Wolves TV this week. Gonçal, welcome to Wolves. Thank you. How pleased are you to be here? É um, é um grande orgulho estar aqui, uh, poder uh, entrar nesta equipa e na Premier League é, é sempre muito bom para mim. Estou muito contente e, e espero começar o mais o mais rápido possível. So what was it about Wolves that appealed to you? Na, a conversa com com o Mr. Bruno uh, e com, com alguns dos jogadores que, ta, que também tive na que, que com quem lido na seleção. Uh, fez com que eu viesse para aqui porque disseram que era uma grande liga que, que queriam fazer grandes coisas no Wolves e foi um dos foi uma das coisas mais importantes foi ter ter, ter conversado com eles. And you've played in Portugal, France, Spain. How excited are you now to play in the Premier League? Não, estou, estou muito entusiasmado. É uma é uma liga que, que todos os jogadores querem jogar e agora é esperar adaptar-me o mais rápido possível para para poder ajudar a equipa já no sábado se for possível. E, e estou muito entusiasmado. And you worked with Bruno Large at Benfica. How much of an influence did that have on your decision to come here? Não, a, a conversa tive dois, duas, três, dois, três telefonemas com o Mister. Uh, já nos conhecíamos de, do tempo do Benfica e foi sempre foi muito importante uh, a chamada dele para eu para eu para eu vir para o Wolves. And a lot of your new teammates here, you've played with at Benfica and for Portugal. Did you speak to them? Did you get recommendations before coming here? Sim. Uh, Muitos falaram comigo quando, quando nós fomos à seleção para, para eu vir para cá. Uh, diziam que, que era um, um clube que estava a crescer muito, que, que na Premier League também estava a ser muito mais valorizado que antigamente e, e foi um, muito importante para mim ter falado com eles. How much of a good relationship did you have on and off the pitch with the Portuguese guys that you've played in the national team with? Uh, já, já tenho uma grande relação com, com alguns. Uh, o Semedo já joguei com ele duas, três épocas no Benfica e também na seleção, que já temos uma relação muito, muito próxima. E depois, já durante os anos da seleção, com o Ruben Neves, com, com o João Moutinho, com o José Sá, uh, já tenho uma relação de algum tempo devido à seleção e é sempre muito bom e acho que para, para a minha adaptação vai ser muito mais fácil. E quanto você acha que o seu playing style vai suitar como os Wolves estão tentando jogar esta season under Bruno? Eu acho que se vai encaixar da melhor maneira. Sou um jogador que, rápido, que tenta fazer as coisas com o máximo de intensidade, fazer o máximo de gols possível e se puder assistir também. Uh, já conheço alguma de, uh, tenho visto alguns os jogos de, de, do Wolves e acho que me vou encaixar da melhor maneira e vou tentar e trabalhar para, para estar ao melhor nível. 
And last season in the Liga, you scored quite a few goals and assists as well for Valencia. How confident are you of maintaining that in the Premier League with Wolves? No, I hope that I the numbers of the year past. But I think the most important thing is collectively the team to be well and to be the most possible at the top of the table. E isso é o mais importante. Primeiro, coletivamente, e o individual, certamente, se, se coletivamente estivermos bem, o individual vai, vai fazer com que melhor. E, just finally, what are your long term hopes for your time at Wolves over the next five years? Não, quero, quero fazer o melhor número de, maior número de gols possível e de assistências, ajudar a equipa e tentar que o Wolves esteja nas posições mais, mais acima da tabela e que lute por, por ganhar títulos. Thank you very much. Gonzalo Guedes or Gonzalo Gedge, as it's supposed to be uh, said, but Gonzalo Guedes is what the broadcasters will be using this season. Um, hopefully, he can help score some goals. We've stepped into the archive to pick out a game that was absolutely rammed full of them. Enjoy this one. Costa to take. This joint top score with four goals this season. And there's another goal. Courtney Hawes. Not just any goal either, it's his first for the club. And Wolves take the lead. I don't think he really wants me to celebrate there. He's waited a while for that first Wolves goal. Squirmed in at the far post, decent delivery from Costa. He nodded it down, the goalkeeper button got a touch, but he couldn't keep it out. Such a play there to bring in Fredericks. Luco's with it. Luco back for Fredericks. The ball just holds up for the cross. It's caught back and Johansson! Oh, what a goal! Stefan Johansson with his second goal in as many games and full on the level. Luco actually squeezes it back to Fredericks. Good ball in, good header, great goal! Fulham have come from behind and Floyd Aite. The Togolese international gives them the lead six minutes before the break. Two men over it here for the Costas. It's cut back and Kenny hits it. Oh, that is sensational! A stunning, stunning goal from Tom Kenny. Another strike from range here, but it's fed wide instead by Johansson. It's cut back. Chance. Good save. And again. The guy spreads himself well, and that will be a confidence boost for the youngster. All over the top. Costa backing in. Elva Costa. Cody on the overlap. Cody again. And towards Dicko. Docket is there. Game on. Still over a quarter of this game to go. And Wolves are racing back to get the game started again. With the left back who was in there scoring against Fulham just as he did last season. On the back foot here again, Doherty slides one through. Good ball for Cavallero. Cavallero! 3 3! What a game here at Molyneux! And there's still 16 minutes left. Fulham have thrown away their two goal lead. Ivan Cavallero, who scored in the last win here back in September, and they have set them on the way again. To Wolves throw. To the last lockings now. Cavallero scoops it in. Doesn't quite drop. Dicko trying the overhead. Edwards is there. Edwards! Oh, yes! Wolves have done it! Delirium of Molyneux. Dave Edwards scores in the last minute of the game to surely give Wanderers all three points. Paul Lambert trying to calm everyone down. He knows the hard work starts here. Edwards with a fourth goal in his last five appearances. The angle was so tight, but it didn't matter for the Welshman. Short to Scott Malone, the former Wolves player. He crosses to the far post. It's not a down. Oh, is in there. Fulham have done it. Just when it looked as though this game was over, in the fourth minute of added time, Floyd Aite salvages a point for the Cottagers. 
An incredible game of football. It's just got another twist. Tenth of December, twenty sixteen, feels an absolute lifetime ago. Could we be in for another absolute thriller here this afternoon? We hope so. It's a very different Fulham team nowadays. They are led in attack by a man who has been in frightening goal-scoring form, Alexander Mitrovic. The, the question, I guess, for many, Lee Naylor, is can he actually do it in the Premier League this time round? Because he started off well last week, but he hasn't had a great record in the past. He hasn't scored against Wolves in the Premier League. And we hope that continues today. Yeah, I mean, it was a fantastic, um, fantastic season for him last last season. Uh, scored a lot of goals. His confidence will be sky high. Uh, he obviously got the goal last week. Um, so yeah, he's he's, he's going to be he's going to be one to watch definitely because uh, he you know he'll feel anything he touches at the moment is a goal. Fulham this time round, Tomo, are you a bit more confident for them than? The last time they were in the Premier League? Yeah, hopefully not today. <laughs> I'm confident for them. But, um, yeah, look, they've, they've got a lad up front who can score goals, isn't there? Uh, and it's a big plus for them. So, look, last week against Liverpool, you saw that what he did, sell out the two goals. I know one was a penalty, but he got the penalty himself. Um, and, look, it's, it's, it's going to be a tough game in the, uh, for him in the Premier League. You're coming up against world-class players um, who know how to defend against... Um, the player with his attributes. He's strong, he's good in the air, uh, he brings people into play, but again, he's just going to have to try and keep doing that. Um, I know he found it difficult when he first came into it, but I'm sure that he's learned from that and that he's going to push on. But like I said, I'm hoping it's not going to be today, but it'll be a tough game for him today. So you've got to battle with him because that's one of the things that he, he gives his team. He'll try and bring people into it. He'll battle up there, he'll put his head where it hurts. Um, but that's where you've got to come out on top. You've got to try and stop him getting anywhere in that penalty area and, and also as well the supply to him because say uh, he's very good in the air. Lee, is it hard to assess actually where this Fulham team are because they were so good in the championship. They do have players who were in the Premier League last time round and kind of that bounce from promotion and the feel-good factor and facing a big team like Liverpool last weekend at home will have helped them. Harder to assess where they are today and, and how Wolves can get at them. I think I think from from obviously how it went for them last time, you, you're always going to question: Are they ready for the Premier League? Um, well, last week they gave gave themselves a great account of themselves. Um, it's going to be difficult. I think when you're five to ten games in, that's when you can really, you know, assess where you're at um, as a team, as a club, uh, and, and I think it'll it'll be around that time where they can actually look and say, yeah. We're ready for the Premier League this year. Let's just remind ourselves of the last time these two met. It was a cruel late winner for Madama Traore. Samedo getting set to launch this into the penalty area. It's a curling delivery. It was headed goalwards by William Jose, but a good couple of feet wide of the right-hand post of Alphonse Ariola. It is Robinson trying to lift one in towards Loftus. Cheek, you heads goalwards, and it's just wide. Goodness me, what an opportunity that was for Fulham. Samedo trying to put pressure on Robinson, who leaves Samedo on the deck and now looks to try and run towards Dendonka and lifts a cross in towards Mitrovic, who heads goalwards, but well wide of the right-hand post of Rui Patricio. And Samedo on down the right-hand side to Pedence, just inside the penalty area, lifts across in, yeah. oh, what a powerful header! And William Jose is up and running for Wolverhampton Wanderers. No, it's going to be ruled ridiculous. out. Oh, goodness me. That's, That's unbelievable. Ridiculous. That um, is unbelievable. No chance. No chance. I'm looking. At... Saiz with a couple of short steps. It's Saiz who curls oh. in and it's high over the top of the crossbar. Samedo lifting it in. Dendonka got his head to it. It's looping goalwards oh. just over the top onto the roof of the netting. Yeah, he just couldn't get enough on it, could he? And Guisa trying to lift it to the right side of the box for Tete, who hooks it back towards the edge of the area. It'll drop again to Robinson, who fires it goalwards this time with a bit more venom. And a good save by Patricio Lowe to his left-hand side. 
one has taken short. Matinho lifting it towards the far post. Say he's got something on it, but I think it came off the back of his head more than anything. And yeah. comfortable take. It's Matinho for Gibbs White. Lovely turn by Gibbs White. Comes to Fabio Silva on here for Traore. Traore into the penalty area. He's all alone. Oh. He didn't need anybody. And Adama Traore has scored a stunning goal that surely has to be the winner here at Craven Cottage. It's an unbelievable move right to the death. It's Fulham nil. Wolves won. What drama at Craven Cottage. The last three meetings, Wolves have won by one goal to nil. Is Tomo going to break the habit of a lifetime and abandon his 2-1 standard prediction for a fourth 1-0 in a row? What are you saying, Tomo? Uh, I'm going to go 2-0 today. I'm going to go to nil. I'm going to say, like, hopefully they can get a clean sheet today. Oh, he is feeling confident since he's come back off his holidays. Nails, what are you saying? I was 2-0. OK, both going 2-0. Um, I'm going to go 1-0 no. because I'm entirely predicting. Well, I, I need to do something different now just because Tom has gone for the 2-0. Well, I'm going to go 3-1. 3-1? Oh. OK, 3-1. 3-1, we will wait and see. Let us know your predictions, by the way. Use the hashtag Wolves Live to get in touch with us throughout the game. Commentary from Tom Nails and myself, available at wolves.co.uk and wherever you are in the world, on the move via the Wolves app. Join us for that in the next couple of minutes. We'll build it to kick off from Tomo's best friend. This is Rita. Wolverhampton, home of Wolverhampton Wanderers Football Club, established 1877, champions of the world, the Wolves are coming, they say home is where the heart is, 1877 when it started, founder members of the first league, still let the top flight Wolves are marching, that golden black kit, yes it's legendary, and Steve Ball started a legacy. Champions of the world is what they called us. Another new season, we keep that same energy. When you're part of the pack, you should never fear. We just signed Matinho another year. We're secure at the back now, Collins here. Ran and dunk a top class, now it's clear. When you're building a ship, do it slowly. Choose a strong captain like Cody. We got a beast in the fence like Toti. Jose and Willie play for clean sheets only. So now it's up the table, we're climbing. Last ditch tackle from Johnny, you saw timing. And I know you hear them chants from the South Bank. Lights are made, though I see the sun is shining. I trust Raul to score from the spot. And you know it's never's outside of the box. Pedro Neto stays hungry for goals. Yeah, you know that's Bruno ball to the top. The Wolves are coming. Glory time, all oh, rise, stand proud. Out this smoky city, mulling you roars loud. Move for the soap, with that beautiful sound. Hit the billy right, grab a drink, join the crowd. A yam yam is what I am, and you can hear it. A dharma on the ball, he's the fiercest. Max Kilman at the back, we got Wang in attack. And Poland's on the wing, yeah, it's fearless. A city built on graft in a fight. Out of darkness, come a flight. The young bulls stay hungry and humble. Academy give us talent like Kondo. This is home is where the heart is. And this is where Gibbs White right started. And now this new season starting. Like the man on the horse top battle charging. One city, one club, one passion. This wolf from my heart ain't fashion. One pack, one pride, one vision. Wolverhampton, the wanderer's mission. One city, one club, one passion. This wolf from my heart ain't fashion. One pack, one pride, one vision. Wolverhampton, the wanderer's mission. The wolves are coming.